Well, um, hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Welcome on our platform, uh, Relationship Matters. Relationship Matters, as you know, is uh, your platform have been made for us to share certain things that will help us in our relationship and our marriages, okay? So far, we have been dealing on the subject of relationship. I mean, um, successful marriage takes hard work, meaning that the success of your marriage depend on how much input you put into it or how much work you put into it okay remember our motto is this the success of a marriage is not by finding the right person is actually learning to know and to love the person that you have found that is your right person number one number two the success of marriage is not finding the right person is actually you becoming the right person for your spouse. When those two things are put in place, when you observe those two things, surely you have a very good, long-lasting marriage, a very solid marriage. <clears throat> Today, we want to talk about another subject that can have a, a negative impact or a positive impact as well in your marriage. If um, care is not taken, it can ruin your marriage okay but if you organize yourself well it can be a blessing to your marriage okay this is the issue of money so today we are talking about money in the family money in the marriage money the whole world is rotating around money everything is money okay everything you want to do in life money must always be in the center of it therefore money is there to help us to live a successful life money is there to serve us but the money is never um the root of the problem the, the root is the love of money okay so we have money but you must know that money is there to serve you but money you should not love money at the expenses of uh, human love that's where it becomes a problem when you are loving money more than your fellow human being then it becomes a problem then money becomes a problem People kill each other because of money. War come to their fighting because of money. Marriages can break down because of what? Because of money. That's why today we want to see a bit what money, what is the impact money can have in the marriage and how can we avoid problem um, happening in the marriage, okay? Why? Because 40%, can you imagine that? 40%, that means that four out of 10 marriages are broken down because of lack of understanding of money. People have a wrong understanding what money is all about. When we don't understand it, obviously it will affect our relationship. We will not be happy in that relationship. Very soon we want to, we want to divide. You want to go apart, your, world, your wife goes apart, you goes apart, your husband goes apart. So that's why it's very important we understand it. Now, um, so, money is there to serve us how can money serve us it's simple you want to buy a drink you say money buy me a drink money will bring you a drink because you give money you get the drink you want to eat something now you say oh money go and buy me this so money will go and buy you what you want you have it you want to buy nice clothes or anything you use money you say money i want this clothes i want this car it comes to you right money i'm not feeling well money go and buy me medication money will go and buy you medication you see so money is your servant money is there to serve you but the problem arises when we begin to serve money we begin to um put our life in, in i mean we exchange our life because of money whereas money is there to serve us when we begin to serve money we begin to love money more then it becomes a problem so problem arises in the marriage for some few issues about money. The first one is, the first of all, is what? Lack of planning. Lack of planning. When a couple, now that you are married together, right? Before you were maybe boyfriend and girlfriend, you are maybe dating each other, that was different. Now you are a married couple. Now that you are living together, remember, two are becoming one. So now you are one living under one roof. You are sharing your life together. Your family now know that my son 
are taking this daughter in the house. The, 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 the white family also knows that our daughter is living with this man in the house. So two of them now are one. So therefore, everything you do should be done together in together understanding. Let everything be on the table because you are sharing one life. This is it. Can your hand be divided? No, it's one body. Can you divide your brain in two? You can't. Can you divide your body in two? You can't. So it becomes one body. Therefore, everything you do in that relationship must be together in common accord, in unity, in common understanding. So it is the issue of money. So lack of planning can be very, very costly for any marriage. What does that mean? It is when a partner don't have a common plan, a common budget. But as a couple, the first thing you should do with your finances, you must have what? You should talk together, sit down together, husband and wife, have a common budget, know what are the priority of the family, what money is supposed to spend on on food, essential, this and this, your project, everything. How much money has to be saved? How much money have to go for this, for that? How much money will be our uh, personal money for pocket? How much money we have to put aside to help others? So more or less must be a planning of the family, a family budgeting. We must have a budget for a family. This is very, very important because when everything is put plain, it creates trust, it creates unity. Both of you know where the money is kept. Both of you know where the money is going, how much is going, how much we are, send, we are, we are saving, and so on and so forth. So when everything is plain, well planned, you find out that you will live together. No conflict, no friction, because everything is, you know, I know. We know how much we know how much we are spending how much we are saving what are we spending on essential of the house how much we are giving and so and so forth so everything is known by every one of you is very important but if we are not planning well very soon it can lead to friction it can lead to um, one partner will not be happy one partner will be complaining where is the money going what are we going with the money i don't even know what you are doing with it why are we lacking his it begins problems, problem upon problem very soon. You know, when conflict begins like that, it kills love. When love is dead, there's no way you can live together. It can lead to separation. So as a couple, my advice is learn to plan together. Learn to have a family budget to avoid any friction or conflict that can bring division in the house. Now, next thing, what happens when we don't plan well? It can lead to debt in the family. Debt. Debt usually are due to the unwise um, planning. For instance, in the couple, if one of the, the partner is, um, is fond of borrowing, you know, when we don't plan well as a couple, we don't put money together. That's why the money, will, you may have a lot of money, but because you don't plan well, you find out that money just going left, right, center, you don't know where it's going. So there's no good planning. And that can lead to debt. Because you don't have enough, what do you do? Let us borrow. Let us borrow to buy this. Let us borrow to buy this. Let us borrow to... So too many debts can come. And when there are so many debts, now what happens next? You want to use the family money to clear the debt. And when that happens, it can lead what? To hardship so life become like why are we having this problem why are we having so many debt why is this why is that so the money that you're supposed to use for the joy in the family you're now using it to clear the debt believe you me that can lead to hardship can lead to conflict can lead to uh, many problems in the family borrowing is good when we borrow for um investment we borrow for buying asset asset that can bring us more money in the family that's why i say at the beginning that if we plan well money can be a joy in the family because we know that we have enough we can do we can plan for holidays we can plan for outing we can plan for buying a new car uh, this and this and we can plan but when we don't have that it can become a major issue in the family therefore borrowing is good when we are borrowing to invest when we are borrowing to um uh, to buy asset, the asset that can multiply money for the family. 
therefore it's very important so when we don't plan well we live to debt now when debt comes in debt can create a major conflict in the family the two partners now begin to complain one another that you are the one borrowing why did you go and borrow look at this later begin to come people begin to call creditor things like that it can become a problem i personally know at least a few families who ended up in divorce because i think the husband were buying so many things like uh, all of those designing things things like that they didn't plan well and when <laughs> the debt amounted the wife was not too much aware of what's going on and overnight she began to see people coming to the house they want to repossess this want to repossess the wife began to complain i was not aware things like that it mounted to a major conflict in the family and guess what happened it led to divorce so lack of planning can lead to debt and debt can lead to problems in the family it can lead to divorce so therefore let us do the first thing first learn to plan as a family okay that's the second tip so the first one is what planning the second thing avoid debt because it can lead to it the third conflict also can happen in the family when um one is too thrifty or fond of saving at all costs it is good to save but um when one partner want to save neglecting the needs of the other partner and the kids that can become a problem yes because one partner may not be happy that well i want to buy this i can't afford it i want to buy this i can't afford it because you keep on saving every single penny it's good to save remember money is to serve us while we are living it is important that we also live a better a decent life we are working for it therefore the money should be there to help us but as we said earlier on, as a family should come back together sit down together talk through know how much we need to spend on this and this and this how is essential how much we have to save as long as we have a percentage how much we are saving then all of us are happy that we are saving such amount and this is going for outing for traveling for vacation for things like that very important so money is made uh, to be what to be wisely spent to meet the needs of the whole family while we are alive but don't be stingy don't be uh, stingy to spend, to, oh, sorry, to always save, save everything. We must be generous towards our partner, towards our wife, our husband, and towards the kids as well. So when one is always keen on saving, saving, you don't want to spend any penny to buy your partner something or to buy the kids or to meet the needs of the kids or the wife or the husband, it can lead to problem. And that also can be a problem in the family. So therefore, it's very important that we um, that we um, we look onto this. We try to manage how money can be saved or money can be spent. Okay. Now the third thing is the fourth thing I think is selfishness. Selfishness concerning money can also be a problem. Remember, we are in the marriage because we are there to serve one another. We are there to uplift one another. We are there to um, to love your partner. So the, the aim of being the married is to make your partner happy at all costs. So Biko is the most important person, person in your life. So therefore, you are there to serve your partner. Okay? So therefore, be generous. Don't be selfish. Okay? The couple should share their income together. That is the, the, the bottom line about it. So the wife, the husband, learn to share to to um, to share your income together, to fund a family budget so that every one of you will have access to that budget. We should know how much it is. So as long as we have how much we are saving, how much this are going for, this are going for that one, that, you will have enough that can be used to meet the need of one another. So selfishness can be a problem when we just want to save. For, I mean, to use money for yourself, not thinking about your partner can lead also to problem. Okay, so but when we put money together, we have a common budget. We know what we are spending on. We have access to it. Each one of us, we can access our reserve or to know what the money is done for. It creates trust. It brings unity. It brings love. It brings togetherness. It creates trust. When we begin to trust one another, 
it creates a good environment for us to live together okay so this is, should be something that every couple we try to do okay we try to do it works when we, put, we have a common budget each one of us have access to it we know what is for them we know the priority what we have to spend on it creates trust it creates unity i begin to trust my wife my wife begin to trust me and it creates atmosphere that we can live together better in good understanding okay um it has come to understand that women usually they are good manager of the house women are good in managing the house even managing the finances of the house so in many cases it's always good to let the wife manage the finance it's not all the time don't get me wrong it's not all the time but usually the woman is the one who should be given the opportunity that task to manage why because historically speaking or by nature women are mostly tend to stay at home most of the time so they know what are the needs of the house more than a man the man is more concerned about to go out to fetch the money traveling going for businesses which is good so usually the woman mostly when you have children she's more at home she understands the needs what we need to work to use the money for therefore it makes sense for her to manage it okay but both of you have access to it both of you know where the money is going both of you are managing it is very good that creates trust creates unity it creates love you love one another and it's good so you know where the money is going for okay another thing comes out is both part, uh, the problem can arise also in the area of finance when both partners have different uh, interests different interests different priorities that means that the husband does not know exactly what the one the wife wants to do with the money the wife does not know exactly what the man wants to do with the money so the man is using his money maybe to buy um, equipment um, in the house things like that the wife wants to use the money for uh, beauty for things like that so there's no really common priority different interests can also lead to conflict why because it arises a time where you begin to question one another what did you use the money for or oh, i used the money to buy i didn't know why did you do that what did you use the money for i used that saw some bag i want to buy makeup or things. so you see it can create problem and those small problems if they are not well managed they can lead to a big conflict because of different interests when it's different interests it's like a divided house we don't have a common target it's divided division always leads to what to to um to conflict to separation so you should avoid that therefore you must have a family budget whereby we know the priority all of us will know what is the priority why because the one life you are living remember you are living together is a life that you have decided to share together because we are sharing together so all of us must work together because one body can, that cannot be separated that's another problem that can lead to problem because of what because of money another problem that can happen also that can lead to money to i mean to problem in the family because of money unfortunately this affects women many cases okay it is when um how can i put it when the woman always like to spend money ask money more from the man it's natural that the man is the head of the family usually the woman always comes to the man I need money i need money it is good yeah it is good it shows dependency that i depend on my husband it is good naturally but when the woman begin to ask too more to buy things like how to buy more jewelries needs money to buy more bags more clothes although she have them but she want more how to buy more shoes usually she buying those things because she want to compete with other women around and that's where the problem arises. She saw other women. Oh, look at that woman. She wearing. Oh, look at my colleague. She wearing that. But you already have shoes. No, I want this. I want this. When the woman want always to get, to get, to buy, to buy, to buy. But when the husband is not able to always supply, it can lead also to problem. The woman become disappointed. Well, you oh, never have money. I ask money, you never have money. That can lead to problem. So women, what I advise you is that be more um satisfied with what you have what your husband because remember it is your husband you don't have any other life this is the life you have you are came to that life to be happy 
So the one you have, the small you have, be satisfied with it. As long as you can plan, you have a good plan. You have, this is our plan, our family plan. This is how much we are saving. This is how much we are spending. Then you know that, yes, I can free a bit here. I can buy time to time, buy clothes, buy this, buy this. Look decent, which is good. But remember, your priority is to please your husband. Your priority is to make your husband fall in love with you all the time. Not outsider, not the people that. As long as you look, as long as you look decent outside, they look at that. You are not begging, you are not shabby, you are not, you are okay, you are decent, you are fine. That's okay. But when it becomes competition, you want to compete with your people outside. Oh, they have a car, I want to have a bigger car. Oh, they have a car a bag, I want to have the best bag. I want to have the best makeup, the best wig, or things like that. <laughs> that's where the money is spent on necessary and if the husband cannot cover it it can lead also to crisis to division so we should avoid that now the, th the other side now to men the problem also can, can arise when the man um is prone to we call it like laziness it's not laziness but it's prone to spending money for unnecessary things like gambling using money for gambling using money for drink for unnecessary leisures going outside football to the stadium going to spend money to buy season ticket things like that or using money i want to be to 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 to, to get rich quicker and spending money on lottery on gambling or things like that mostly men are the one to do that Oh, I want to, I must buy that car. Oh, I must, I must have that car. But you are not planned well with the family. So all the money is going to that equipment because you want it at, at all costs. Without planning, that also can lead to trouble. Why? Because the wife and the kids, they are not getting what they're supposed to. The most basic needs, you may not be, may find it difficult to, to meet those needs. It can also lead to problem. Okay? And therefore, men, I say that, it is good to buy the good car. It is good to go on leisure, things like that, but planning first so that we can know how much we have, how much remaining, can we afford it, can I afford it. As long as you have something that is decent, you are not in competition. You are not trying to show up that, look at me, I'm a big man, this and no, plan first. Do you have enough? Do you think you can sustain that type of life? If it's not, be humble enough with your wife. Your wife loves you. Maybe not because of money. She just loves it because you are the man that she has found in life. So therefore, let's all plan together so that we can live together better. Now, another thing is, a problem can arise when the man, because of he wants to make money at all costs, he can sacrifice the precious time, the family time, just because of work, work, work. It is good to work. It's not bad. It is good to work. But there must be a time that you reserve that time with your wife, with your children in the house. Decent women, they are not really looking for material things. They want your presence. They want to feel that love. They want that being together with them. Of course, you are not saying that the whole day, cuddling, touching, things like that. No, there's a time to work. Yeah, you have to work to provide for the family. But when the husband begin to, um, spend more time working than being with the family that can also lead to problem in the family so money becomes the priority the target is money at all costs so you are i mean you are um, spending love at the expenses of the of money meaning that you are replacing love with the money you want to get money at all at all costs that can also affect your marriage so men please let her be sober let her watch by that side stop the gambling stop the get rich quick mentality go back to the wife let us plan together and that can help the marriage so these are the few things i wanted to share about money in the family what money can bring money can be a blessings if we understand it if we know how to do it but it can be also a problem if we don't understand it so in conclusion what can we say we can say that the priority of the family should be how to plan the month, how to make a budget, the family planning, the budget of the family. We must know that the money is supposed to spend for food in the family, for housekeeping essentials, bills, so and so forth. Have a budget for saving, right? Money that we can use to help others, pocket money, and money that I need for my personal need, 
and things like that. So everything must be planned in, ad in advance. When we plan it, when we plan it, we find that we will always have enough to do other things. You do call vacation, housing, buying more extra clothes, whatever you want, that is it, if we plan well. But if we fail to plan, that's where the problem begins to mount in the family, and it can lead to friction, it can lead to um, uh, disappointment, and disappointment can lead to conflict. You see, when those things happen in the family, it will kill love. Let me tell you, love will be killed. Love is like a dove. When love has been tampered with, the dove will just fly. When the dove flies, it's very difficult to bring the, love, the dove back. That's what love is. When the love is hurt because of the friction, because of the conflict, it'll be difficult to bring that love back. So therefore, now that you are settled in the marriage, the first one is together, sit down together, plan your money, know where to spend, how much to save. If you do that, your marriage will be strong. You build trust and understanding. So this is what we wanted to share with you. And uh, I hope you get something out of what we are shared today. And uh, good luck into your marriage. And we'll come back again next song, next Monday, same time, 8 p.m. We we'll go for other topics that will help us to maintain the love in the marriage, to solidify our marriage. For the now, goodbye and see you again. Same time, 8 p.m. British time, next Monday. Bye-bye. See you.